What's up, everybody? Joe Brown here. This is the Heresy Financial Show, and the stablecoin UST, Terra's algorithmic stablecoin, is blowing up. It is absolutely failing, and so in this video, I'm going to show you exactly why it was doomed from the very beginning, number one, and number two, how our central planning overlords are going to try and use this to Trojan horse in a central bank digital currency. Ready? Let's dive in. Today's video sponsor is iTrust Capital. You've heard me talk about iTrust Capital for a long time on this channel. They are the best way to get exposure to gold, silver, Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies inside of your IRA. You simply open up an IRA with iTrust Capital. It can be a traditional, an I, a Roth, a SEP, any type of IRA that you need. You transfer your funds in, whether it's new contributions or a rollover from a prior retirement plan, and you can invest in these alternative assets. Assets. And now they have just rolled out a new feature, contingent orders. Whereas before it was very difficult to time your trades, now you can enter trades to buy or sell based on specific conditions like price. That way, if the price of Bitcoin falls 5% in 24 hours, like it has a couple of times over the past few weeks, you can have an automatic order triggered to buy the dip and write it back up where it's currently sitting higher than it was when it fell just within the last couple of days. Take advantage of the volatility. In my opinion, I I trust capital is the easiest it is the cheapest and the most secure way to get access to physical gold, physical silver, and Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies with your retirement account. And if you use my link in the description below, you'll get $100 worth of Bitcoin as a signup bonus. All right, so the stablecoin UST, which is one of the most popular stablecoins out there, is blowing up. It is an algorithmic stablecoin that is tied to a cryptocurrency, Luna, and I am not going to get into the relationship between how this stablecoin is supposed to regulate its value with Luna. I'm not going to get into that because quite frankly, it's a little bit complicated, number one. And number two, it's utterly pointless. It doesn't matter. What I am going to do is explain why this relationship, why this stablecoin was destined for blow up from the very beginning. And it comes down to the fact that economies are dynamic. They are not static. We do not have an evenly rotating economy where it is just shuffling around the same pieces of wealth. The economy changes and grows and declines over time. Wealth is not like uh, matter, which cannot be created or destroyed. Wealth can be created and destroyed. Otherwise, we wouldn't have so much more wealth today than we did a thousand years ago, 10,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago. We have a continuous growth of wealth, which is real goods and services and accessibility and abundance compared to even 100 years ago, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago wealth grows over time. So economies are dynamic. They are not static. They do not stay the same. How is this communicated? This is communicated through the pricing system. Value, the value of anything is communicated with prices. Prices are simply information that communicate the relative scarcity or abundance of any given item relative to everything else, all of the other options. So when you have something that is designed, let's say like a stable coin, and its value is pegged, to the value of something else. You are going to have to maintain or defend that peg and it is destined to fail from the very beginning. A long time ago, we had a very good example of this called a bimetallic standard where you had the price of silver and the price of gold legally connected. The silver to gold ratio was legally 15 to 1. So when you look back, a lot of silver bugs will say, hey, the silver to gold ratio is really high right now. We got to get a lot closer to the historical norm of 15 to 1. That's what it was at for hundreds of years. We're going to have to get back to that. And so silver is on sale relative to gold. So buy silver. And then when the ratio comes back down to a more normal rate, then you can buy more silver by selling some of that gold, tra trading it in for, silver, uh, for gold. The problem with this line of thinking is that for most of that time, when the silver to gold ratio is 15 to 1, it was mandated by law. It was not a result of the free market, of free market participants buying and selling, trading gold and silver for other commodities, for goods, for services. And then the ratio based on supply and demand and the value of everything else at all throughout that time 
putting that ratio at 15 to 1. It was a legal price. It was, hey, it takes 15 ounces of silver to get one ounce of gold legally. That price was pegged. And that caused a lot of economic turmoil. And it ultimately drove one of the metals out of circulation. Because if the legal price is 15 ounces for one ounce of gold, but the real ratio based on supply and demand, the real value, the, the, the intrinsic value of that relationship at that time, let's say is 20 to one, that it really should take 20 pieces of silver to get one piece of gold. Who's gonna do that trade? So you're gonna have economic misallocation of resources, and you're going to have one of those, whichever is the most valuable, but the, the market's not allowed to respond accordingly. It will dry up and cease to be in circulation. So then the only way to maintain that is to legally maintain that by artificially dumping one or buying the other from the market to try and maintain what you have set is going to be that price peg. The same thing happens with stable coins. Unless it's a pass through entity where you're basically just getting access to a fully reserved uh, asset on the other side, any peg is destined to fail from the start. That's why currency pegs are failing. That's why things like the uh, the yen are collapsing right now because they're trying to maintain the uh, interest rate on the 10-year uh, Japanese uh, bond, the 10-year go government bond there because they're having to sell more yen in order to buy more 10-year uh, bonds in order to keep that uh, interest rate within the bound that they have set. So these artificial constraints that are set by central planners or whoever it is setting these, ultimately they're destined to failure because at some point the market will change. The market is dynamic. Economies are dynamic. At some point, the relative abundance or scarcity of things will change and the natural price will no longer be reflected in the enforced price. And that is exactly what is happening with the stablecoin UST right now. And that's why it's blowing up. Now, this has also contributed to a recent sell-off in Bitcoin because UST Terra has had a lot of Bitcoin reserves, so they've had to violently sell off a lot of their Bitcoin reserves in order to defend their peg. Ultimately, again, look, it failed. And that is another reason why Luna is collapsing at the moment as well. But that's not the biggest story here. The biggest story is that central banks, central planners, they're going to use this and uh, in the future, more things like this will happen as a Trojan horse for central bank digital currencies. Take a look with me at this article from Bloomberg. Stable coins are vulnerable to runs. They may heighten risks, the Fed says. Back up for a second. What is a run? Go back hundreds, thousands of years ago, a bank run was when the bank said, give me all the gold, I'll give you paper instead. Then they print more paper for loans and then everybody would realize prices go up, there's more paper than there is gold in the vault. Everybody would go rush to the bank to go get their gold, be the first in line. That's a run. That's a peg though. This is exactly the same exact thing. This is a peg where they're saying, hey, this paper is worth that amount of gold, but it's not fully reserved. So it's not just a pass through entity to the gold itself. And so then you have a misallocation of resources and then you have a run where everybody tries to go collect the real asset and a collapse of the bank. So this is exactly what's happening with these stable coins. And it is true. They are subject to runs, just like what is happening right now. And it is true. And that is why central banks were invented, was to prevent the runs, which they can. That is why the central bank was set up as a bank for the bank, so that if a small bank, an individual bank had a run, they could just call on the gold from the entire system through the central bank. Ultimately, though, that fails, and that's why it failed, and that's why they uh, outlawed, confiscated all the gold in America and brought in a bunch of new gold reserves to the Federal Reserve reserve that this happens over and over and over throughout history. Same reason why the Bretton Woods system failed when the United States printed a bunch more dollars and the entire world tried to go uh, collect their gold. There was a bank run on the Federal Reserve. Same story over and over and over again. And so for the time being, you can absolutely stop these bank runs from happening by centralizing it and bringing it all under one roof, especially if you have the power of the printing press and no, uh, no reserves that you are required to keep. Keep. That is why money market funds, which stable coins are just a money market fund. At the end of the day, that's all they are. Money market funds were subject to runs and that's why it was such a big deal 
in the financial crisis when one of the money market funds broke the dollar, broke the buck. And so that's why money market funds have had more regulation so that we don't have to wor we don't have to worry about the fragility or the instability with money market funds. They're just to pass through to the dollar now. And it's ironic because crypto, which started with Bitcoin as a way to escape the system, escape the dollar, has really turned into a way to support the dollar. All stable coins do is provide more support, more buying pressure for the dollar. They've turned into virtual money market accounts. And so this is going to be something, this event is going to be something the Federal Reserve, central planners, the Treasury, governments around the world are going to point to stable coins blowing up like this. And it's guaranteed to happen again in the future or some sort of fraud to happen again in the future. They're going to say, hey, look, we need to usher in a central bank digital currency to replace all the stable coins and serve the exact same function as the stable coins are, uh, are offering right now, but we'll do it in a way that won't fail because we can ultimately print the money. We don't have to rely on somebody else pegging to us. We just have the uh, value that we're setting based on uh, what we're printing. And then you don't have the, uh, you don't have the risk of that, uh, that failing, that peg not being able to hold up because there's no peg anymore. It's just the dollar with the central bank digital currency. Now, the other option, instead of saying, hey, we're going to legalize all the stable coins, we're gonna regulate them, let everybody use them, let them blow up, and then replace them all with a central bank digital currency. The other option is to regulate this, let everybody use them, build them up, build this ecosphere, and then uh, let some of them collapse and then have one of them will co-opt it as a central bank digital currency. And so we're, instead of placing our own, building our own, we'll just say, hey, we're going to take this one, we will nationalize this uh, stable coin, and now we're gonna turn that into a central bank digital currency. That's very likely. That was actually, I was talking with Jeff Booth, author of The Price of Tomorrow, over this uh, last weekend in Dallas at the Market Disruptors Live Conference. And we were having a you know fantastic conversation, but that was one of the points that he made, is that the technology to create a stable coin is not that difficult. Difficult, but what is likely is regulating and uh, allowing the stablecoin ecosphere to grow and get it infiltrated everywhere. And then instead of trying to swap everything out with their own, just co-opt one and adopt it and turn it into a central bank digital currency. So either way, I see this as a very real sign that we will uh, start to see stable coins being used as reasoning. We'll start to see news articles like this one from Bloomberg, where the Federal Reserve comes out and starts talking about, hey, they're, they're vulnerable to bank runs. And we have to start looking at these, regulating them so that it's safe for everybody to use them. And then at the end of the day, it'll be a sneaky way to get people to start getting used to using that and then replace it with a central bank digital currency or turn one of the existing ones into their own CBDC. And and you know how I feel about CBDCs. They are a tyrant's wet dream. I made plenty of videos on that before. And so if you're interested on my thoughts on what a central bank digital currency would do to an economy, you can check out these videos that are linked at the end of this one. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.